Hello and welcome to day 11 of this book, Frameworks, Volume 4, Creation by Paul Blackham. Day 11, talking to a dragon. Talking to a dragon. Here we're looking at creation and the Lord has created this immense world full of life and goodness. He's planted the Garden of Eden. He's created Adam and Eve and put them in this garden to enjoy all the goodness and life of the living God. And yet in this conversation between Eve and this dragon, language and words are used to radically undermine, uh, to, to tear apart all that the Lord God has made by his foundational word in sending forth the Lord Jesus to create the world. And, and so this conversation, this this crime, uh, because the Garden of Eden now is the scene of a crime, uh, is this uh, this event that we know of as the fall, as darkness and death breaks into this world and, and seeks to unravel and undo uh, this good creation that God has put in place. As we look at the fall, we remember that uh, the scene of the crime is the Garden of Eden, this place of absolute beauty and wonder in the presence of the living God. What this tells us is that there is no excuse for sin. There are no extenuating circumstances. It's not the bad environment or the unfortunate upbringing that leads to sin. No, even in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve there with all that was in their favor. Nevertheless, they chose the path of darkness and of death. That's the first thing we see. It is even in the most favorable of environments that the human heart chooses to sin. And how does this happen? Well, it happens in talking to a dragon. Like this serpent who comes, this snake who comes and who lies, who murders, who draws Eve down into his rebellion. Who is this serpent? Well, the Bible gives us uh, a couple of places uh, of insight into who this serpent is. Who is this Satan? Well, he is this angel, this guardian cherub. We read of uh, this uh, creature in Ezekiel 28 and in Isaiah 14, uh, both passages which speak of this angelic creature uh, who is made to be uh, high and mighty, to be wonderful and splendid. And yet the problem was that he looked to himself and saw such beauty that he thought that he should be in the place of the living God. He thought that he should sit on the throne of heaven. And so he lies to Eve in this conversation, seeking to draw her into his rebellion. And Eve, well, she too willingly follows, too willingly listens. In John chapter 8, we're told that the devil is, uh, uh, the Satan is a liar and a murderer from the beginning, this moment when darkness and sin enters into the world. He lies to Eve, but she too willingly hears and follows his leading. Did God really say? Uh, can you really trust that the Lord God, his word is true? Can we really trust that he is the God who is good and who is for you? This tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, do you really trust that the Lord is the source of knowledge as to what is good and what is evil? Would it not be better to push the Lord aside and to take hold yourself of the ability to determine that which is good and that which is evil. Would it not be better? Perhaps the Lord is hindering you, holding you back. And so in this conversation, it is the very word of the living God that is called into question. The devil, Satan, putting himself in the place of the Lord, Eve and Adam, joining in and saying, yeah, maybe the Lord isn't good. Maybe we should be the, the ones who are in charge. And so taking that fruit in 
engaging in this conversation. Eve, really, what should she have done? She should have run away. The moment the devil revealed himself to be who he is, Satan, Lucifer, she should have run away, gone to Adam. They should have thrown Satan out of the Garden of Eden, expelled him from the camp, thrown him away from the presence of the Lord, and to maintain this as a place of holiness and of righteousness. But unfortunately, far too often we hear those words, we believe those words, we perpetuate those words ourselves. When we ask the question, did God really say? Is God really good for us? Is he not too harsh? Is he not unkind? Does he not hold us back? In that and in so many ways, we choose not to believe, not to hear the words of the living God. And we do so to our own peril and to our own destruction. But praise be for that word that speaks life. And we have hope that that word will speak again to bring life even to those who have turned away to darkness and to death.